Hey, uh, I'm just wrapping up a video. Can you send over some of the B-roll from CES this year? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. No, no problem at all. Yeah, might be a bit of a problem. External drives are basically the only way that I store and save my files. Like I have these four SSDs, which are storing all my working projects and files. And then I only have one real backup and it's on this. So I said enough is enough. It's time to completely revamp my storage solution. And I'm talking over 10 terabytes of storage to work with, being able to access my files on multiple devices, anywhere and everywhere, and not have to worry about any sort of third parties or subscriptions like iCloud, Google Drive, or Dropbox. And most importantly, not have to sell a kidney just to upgrade my internal Mac storage. The solution is a NAS. So enter in the Ugreen DXP 4800 Plus. Now, you guys have heard me talk about Ugreen before. They are channel partners and they make some incredible accessories like dongles, hubs, chargers, cables, etc. But they're now entering into the NAS game. And if this thing is anywhere near as good as their already existing accessories, then this could be a very compelling option in the NAS space, especially with this being a first generation product. In case you're new to NAS systems like I am, a NAS stands for Network Attached Storage, and it's essentially just a box with a computer on the inside and access to a bunch of hard drive bays, and these hard drive bays get turned into external storage, and you access this external storage over your network. So you can plug it into your computer, via this ethernet port or plug it into your router or your modem. And then you're able to access over this ethernet port like directly or even over your Wi-Fi. This means you can store all your files and data in one place and then access it from anywhere at any time, basically kind of creating like your own cloud storage service. So something like iCloud, Google Drive or Dropbox, but it's your own thing. Like you have full access and full control over how you want this thing to work. And uh, that's kind of just the beginning. The first thing I immediately noticed about the DXP 4800 Plus was the build quality. This thing is built like a tank. The body is almost entirely made up of anodized aluminum and it looks and feels very premium. And that's especially when you compare it to a lot of other options on the market, which are usually just made out of plastic. And this thing looks really good too. I'm personally gonna have this in a separate room just because of the way I have my network stuff set up. But if I had to have this either on my desk or like out in the open or something, I honestly wouldn't complain. The DXP 4800 Plus packs some seriously impressive hardware, including an Intel Gold 800 55 processor, 8 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, which is upgradable and or expandable, and features both 2.5 gigabit and 10 gigabit Ethernet ports for blazing fast connectivity. It also has two Gen 4 NVMe SSD slots, multiple USB ports for connecting devices, and even an SD card reader, which I gotta give a huge shout out to because that's not only super convenient for offloading a bunch of photos and videos, but it's also something you just don't usually see on a NAS. The main thing that pleasantly surprised me was just how incredibly easy it was to install the drives into the four bays. These bays just pop right out, the trays slide out, you align the drives, press the tray back in, and boom, you're all secure. There's no tools or screws. And I also like the fact that there's a locking system on the front just to make sure that everything stays in place. When I was searching the different hard drive options other use for their NAS systems, the Seagate Iron Wolf line kept coming up and seemed to kind of be like the go-to for NAS systems because of the reliability and decent speeds. So I picked up four four terabyte Seagate Ironwolf drives, which will be used in a RAID 5 configuration, which should roughly give me about 12 terabytes worth of storage space to work with. I also went ahead and populated the NVMe SSD slot so I can really take advantage of the speed that this NAS is capable of producing. And I ended up choosing two two terabyte Samsung 970 EVO plus NVMe SSDs, which bring read and write speeds roughly around 300 megabits per second. I'm gonna be using these as their own storage pool opposed to cache where I can store files and folders that I need to access often and very frequently. And the installation was also super straightforward as you just pop off the bottom black plate install the drives and add the thermal pads, which do come included and that's it. Although I won't be getting the full speeds out of the SSD, I will still have a 10 gigabit connection because of course the NAS itself has a 10 gigabit port, but then also my Mac Studio has a 10 gigabit ethernet port. So 10 gigs going both ways. 
And also I've actually taken it a step further and upgraded my ethernet switch or my network switch, whatever you want to call it. And now I'm going to have a 10 gig connection going from my router to the NAS and to the Mac studios. But before we get into any sort of speed tests or anything like that, let's go check out the Ugreen software. Once you've installed the drives, you download the app to your computer, set up the NAS, which is pretty straightforward, choose your RAID configuration and you're done. The interface is nice and clean, and most importantly, very simple and easy to use. It comes with a couple of apps pre-installed, but you can also download more apps later on. The storage manager is super easy to use. It offers a nice snapshot of your drives. The file manager is also super straightforward as well. You can literally just drag and drop files from your computer to the NAS, or you can even go ahead and mount the NAS as a location in your finder window through SMB and save files to it just like you would any other location. And that's primarily how I've been interacting with the NAS. I chose to go with two storage volumes. One storage volume is in RAID 5 featuring the four Ironwolf drives. And then the second one is in RAID 0 featuring the two Samsung NVMe SSDs. And I know RAID 0 sounds kind of crazy, but I actually plan on grabbing a second NAS for a true backup. So once that happens and I get that all set up, I will switch the RAID configuration on the SSDs. And if you guys want to see a video on that and how I kind of set up the part two, let me know in the comments section down below. A big thing I need to mention here is that the software is still in production. It's not complete and it's basically in beta. And since I've actually received the NAS, Ugreen has already pushed out three software updates and they're just continuously fixing things, improving things. And that is kind of to be expected as this is a first generation product as well as a first generation software. But Ugreen is working on it. So hopefully things get ironed out by the time this officially hits the market. For me personally though, I haven't really had any issues or problems with the software, but to be fair, I'm in no way a power user whatsoever. I'm not running any VMs or Docker or Plex or any sort of media server or anything like that. I'm just simply looking for a good storage solution that allows me to basically cancel my Dropbox subscription, have a lot of storage that I don't need to purchase any more external SSDs. And from that standpoint, everything's pretty smooth so far which also holds true for the mobile app, which works on my iPhone as well as my iPads. And unlike a lot of other mobile versions of NAS apps, this one feels very modern and super clean. It actually even almost feels like an Apple app. We have the homepage where we have a few widgets that basically just give basic information on the NAS. And then we have all the same apps that are available over on the desktop, such as the file manager, task manager, storage manager, and also the ability to control the settings. Searching for files is also very easy thanks to the integrated AI smart assistant that can search for text within documents, but also for photos, like for instance, for pets, food, cars, people, and whatever. And all of this can be done without even an internet connection. So it's all happening on device. All right, speaking of speeds, let's go ahead and test the drive speeds. And we'll first test it at the Mac Studio, get that full 10 gigabit connection. And then I'll go ahead and grab my MacBook Air and test it through Wi-Fi. Last thing I want to do is test this from a remote location. And this is going to be a true test for me as I'm trying to get away from the cloud storage subscriptions. And it's important that I'm able to remotely access my files as well as be able to upload and download things at good speeds. This will definitely be more dependent on your actual internet connection that you have both in your remote location as well as what your NAS is. And I have about just over a gigabit up and down at home. And my speed from my hotspot is about 300 down and 50 up. So I should be okay for basic file downloads. I'm able to upload and download files by dragging and dropping into the NAS pretty fast and easy. And it's pretty much on par with what I would expect if I had to do this with something like Dropbox. So all in all, this works pretty great. To wrap this video up, I can confidently say that this is going to be my main storage and backup solution for many years to come. No question about it. The Ugreen NASing DXP 4800 Plus has some of the best hardware in the pre-built NAS market. And although the software still needs some more time to cook, I don't think that's going to stop this thing from becoming one of the best storage solutions out there because 
Software can always be improved, it can always be fixed, and you can always add new features as time goes on. I actually enjoyed this model so much, I plan on picking up the DXP480T+, Plus, which is the all flash and all SSD enclosure, and have that being a working drive and have this model be a backup drive. Let me know if you guys want to see like a part two when that enclosure arrives and see how I set all that up and everything and basically go from one of the worst ways of backing up your data to a really reliable and well backed up solution. Honestly, who even thought that storage would even be this much fun? Anyways, let me know what you think about the new Ugreen NAS Sync lineup and let me know if you have any cool storage solutions of your own. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a like and share it to a friend. And if you guys want to see any upcoming videos, make sure you get subscribed and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.